For those of you that have played with 124 instrument clusters in the past, you may have noticed that there is indeed a calibration potentiometer hiding behind the fuel level gauge. And it is indeed for the fuel gauge itself. And you ask why? Why does that need to be there? Well, it's not for you to play with. It's from the factory, how they calibrated this cluster to go into the particular type of car that it was destined for. Reason being, according to the service manual, there are different resistances for the sedan T model and the 90 litre fuel tank version 500E and 420-400. Uh, the difference between the sedan and the 500E isn't that great. You don't notice much difference on the gauge when you're simulating these figures. Uh, and they do actually have a different length sender anyway, because it's obviously a deeper tank to hold 90 litres. But the biggest difference comes about when you are swapping a cluster from a sedan to a T-model or convertible. Because you can see the full position is 3.3 ohms versus 8.6, and empty is 85.6 versus 77.8. Not much difference in the full position, but quite a bit of difference in the empty position. And I'm going to simulate that for you here, and you're going to see what the difference is in the real world. So currently this gauge is calibrated for my vanilla sedan. I have got 85.6 ohms being uh, measured at its fuel level sender input. Um, and you can see it's clearly showing that it's empty. So we'll go ahead and adjust my resistance decade to 77.8 ohms and we'll see what difference that makes. Not enough to lose sleep over, but enough to annoy a person like me. I would not be happy with that. I would want that needle to be pointing bang on the line, or just below it as it was before, when it's well and truly empty and into the reserve. And we can play around with that using that adjustment potentiometer. You can go in both directions. You don't want to go that far. You don't want to go that far. I don't know probably put it there. So that's how you go ahead and calibrate that. But bear in mind that does actually adjust uh, not only the minimum but the maximum. So you can adjust uh, basically the entire sweep from minimum to maximum using that adjustment potentiometer. This is a kind of rare situation but if you have a T model and you need to put a sedan module in there and you want the thing to display correctly, well that's how you do it. You just need to play with that adjustment potentiometer. Um, you can either have really an empty fuel tank or you can take the level sender out and do as MB did. Uh, turn it upside down for full and straightway up for uh, empty to calibrate your gauge spot on. Or you can do what I did and just use a resistance decade. Anyway it's a pretty simple job but hopefully someone might find this interesting. And because I know someone's going to ask, how did you connect that up? Well, it's simply a case on this round connector, positive 12 on pin 6, ground on pin 1, and for the fuel gauge, it's your resistance decade connected between pin 3 and ground. It's as easy as that. And the pin numbers are clearly labelled on the inside of the board. Unfortunately not on the outside, so I mean you do need to take this out to work on it anyway, so if you've got this kind of equipment lying around, well you can probably calibrate your gauge. Just another thing to note, Potentiometers do get oxidized with age, so that is another point of failure as far as a flickering gauge is concerned. 
if you have already serviced or replaced your uh, level sender in the fuel tank and you're still getting erratic behavior by the um, needle, it's entirely possible that potentiometer needs some deoxid sprayed on it. Um, I understand there's potential for cracked soldering as well. Um, this is kind of a weird board in that it's got soldering um, on one side only, the same side with the track, so it's not, not exactly through hole, it's kind of weird. And not everything is easily accessible. Um, the board does get kind of warm in operation, so in theory it could have some bad solder joints, but I personally have not experienced that yet. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, it probably does, but I haven't seen it yet.